Good morning and welcome to St. Matthew's and Morning Prayer on this Friday, the 19th day of February. We are in the season of Lent and today we are going to celebrate the life of Frederick Douglass. Morning prayer begins uh, during the season of Lent in the penitential fashion. Uh, we say a uh, beginning words followed by the confession of sin. From page 38, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Confession of sin begins on <clears throat> page 41 of the prayer book. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your, all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We continue with the Jubilate, which can be found on page 45 of the prayer book. O be joyful in the land, Lord, all ye lands, Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Be ye sure that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful, him, be thankful unto him and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth from generation to generation. We continue with the psalm appointed for today. <clears throat> the portion of the psalm we'll read is of Psalm 85, verses 7 through 13, <clears throat> which can be found on page 709 of the prayer book. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what the Lord is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in, the, in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. We continue with the <clears throat> reading today. It comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 8, beginning at the 30th verse. As he was saying these things, many believed him. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. The Word of the Lord. We continue with the canticle assigned for this morning. <clears throat> we we'll read together Canticle 18, which begins on page 93. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. 
For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being, and yours by right, O Lamb that was slain. For with your blood you have redeemed for God, from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. Born as a slave in the year 1818, Frederick Douglass was separated from his mother at the age of eight and given, to, given by his new owner, Thomas Old, to his brother and sister-in-law, Hugh and Sophia Old. Sophia attempted to teach Frederick to read along with her son, but her husband put a stop to this claiming. It would forever unfit him to be a slave. Frederick learned to read in secret, earning small amounts of money when he could and paying neighbors to teach him. In the year 1838, Frederick Bailey, as he was then known, escaped and changed his name to Frederick Douglass. At the age of 14, he had experienced a conversion to Christ in the African Methodist Episcopal Church, and his recollection of that tradition's spiritual music sustained him in his struggles for freedom. Those songs still follow me to deepen my hatred of slavery and quicken my sympathies for my brethren in bonds, he said. An outstanding orator, Douglas was sent on speaking tours in the northern states by the American Anti-Slavery Society. The more renowned he became, the more he had to worry about recapture. In the year 1845, he went to England on a speaking tour. His friends in America raised enough money to buy out his master's legal claim to him so that he could return to the United States in safety. Douglas eventually moved to New York and edited the pro-abolition journal North Star, named for the Fleeing Slaves Nighttime Guide. Douglas was highly critical of churches that did not disassociate themselves from slavery. Challenging those churches, he quoted Jesus' denunciation of the Pharisees. They bind heavy burdens and grievous to, and grievance, and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move with one of their fingers. A strong advocate of racial integration, Douglas disavowed black separation, separationism and wanted to be counted as equal among his white peers. When he met Abraham Lincoln in the White House, he noted that the president treated him as a kindred spirit without one trace of condensation. There you have the life of Frederick Douglass. We continue our service with an affirmation of faith by saying together the Apostles' Creed, beginning on page 53. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit let us pray. Say together the Lord's Prayer, followed by suffrages B. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name ever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. 
O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. We continue with the colics. Almighty God, whose truth maketh, maketh us free, we bless thy name for the witness of Frederick Douglass, whose impassioned and reasonable speech moved the hearts of a president and a people to a deeper obedience to Christ. Strengthen us also to be outspoken on behalf of those in captivity and tribulation, continuing in the word of Jesus Christ, our liberator, who with thee and the Holy Spirit dwelleth in glory everlasting. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace, through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who has made, <clears throat> O <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who did stretch out thine arms of love on the hardwood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of thy saving embrace. So clothe us in thy spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know thee to the knowledge and love of thee, for the honor of thy name. Amen. Take a moment to offer our prayers and thanksgivings. We give thanks for this week, for the opportunities given for Lenten reflection, for amendment of life, we thank all those who offer their lives as a sacrifice to God and to our fellow humankind. We give thanks for all caregivers, for those who help to mend our world, for those that help protect it. Take a moment to invite your prayers and thanksgiving. Precious God, for all our prayers spoken and those that reside deep in our hearts, we lift them up to you this day. Conclude our prayers by saying together a prayer of St. Christostom on page 59. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, that will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining Morning Prayer this week. I invite you to join our service for the first Sunday in Lent on this Sunday, and join morning prayer again next week. God bless.